B-Bad and Brandon. Uh, welcome to the Platform Podcast, <laughs> Dave. Woo! Woo! I haven't just done that already. Thanks, guys. Johnny, Brando. Uh, good to be here. <laughs> In your New York loft apartment, um, overlooking the, the great town. It's excellent. Yeah, it's a good spot here. Good spot here in New York. Is nice over there? Uh, it's 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 yeah. pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> I just, love it. Just real quickly, just to confirm uh, for the other audiences and mainly myself, you're not actually in New York? <laughs> no. Where, no. where, where um, would you be located in this fine world? Uh, Brisbane. Probably. I'm in uh, Tony Hills oh, yeah. in the north. Very nice. So if anyone is watching at YouTube, yeah. that is just a painting that I mistakenly took for an actual back, back shot of New York City because my simple <laughs> mind hasn't had coffee this morning and thought it'd be hilarious to fuck with me. Um, but Dave, to kick things off, I'll hand over to Johnny. We got one very important question, and then the rest of the podcast is just a lot more free flowing. Um, and by free flowing, I mean there is no plan. The plan mm -hmm. of no plan is the plan. No plan, plan. So Johnny, kick us off. Dave, 21 words or sounds, if you'd like to use sounds, to describe who you are and what you do. Dave Gillen, uh, pay on results business coach at Keystone Executive Coaching in Brisbane. Uh, we grow businesses mostly through maximizing the individual performance of the business owner. Yeah, right. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, and I like that. Because we, uh, we've had a guest of uh, that got put in touch through us through yourself. Um, and how did you get on to business coaching? What's your background? Um, a pretty long and winding road. Um, I started out in, uh, originally did a science degree and ended, ended up in, uh, in mining. Right. I, was, I was originally a, ge a geologist. Oh, cool. That's good. And um, at, at some point, you can only spend so much time kind of living out in the in the dust and <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere before it kind of you start to start to really get thinking about if this is what how you want to spend your life. Um, so yeah, I made a bit of a career change when we had our first mm. son, and um, yeah, just wanted to be home more and and I kind of knew for quite a little while that I I was kind of heading down the wrong the wrong mm. career path. Um, yeah, from there I, I got into um, online business and uh, marketing. Became a marketer, uh, copywriter, right. um, and so yeah. And then that, that was kind of probably 10, 10 years or so. And then uh, gradually I had some really good clients where I, I was able to be in that kind of marketing advisor mm -hmm. role and, and kind of start to play that that coaching role. Um, and then a couple of years ago, um, yeah, moved into into coaching full time. Oof. Mad. That sounds like a, I mean, it, it was, as much as you said, it was a long winding story. Like that little snippet you gave, it really showed a quite unique stepping stone path into where you are right now. But as most of us know, no journey is as smooth as we say it is. What was the challenges for you going between something that was so left field of like geology and, and again, I'm, I'm going to speak on behalf of myself, but I'm also, yeah, you got some gold up there, but I mean, I know nothing about yeah. geology. So going from that into marketing, that's a completely different language. Mm. Yeah, it is. I, I don't know really what drew me towards that. Like I, I wasn't really, you know, when I was younger, I wasn't really drawn to business marketing. It wasn't really on my radar, I suppose. Mm. Um, but probably it was driven mostly by desire for a kind of a different lifestyle. Yeah, right. Um, and then through that, it was kind of by accident. So I, you know, I had these ideas of starting online businesses and, you know, um, it sounds pretty good, you know, passive income and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, so I kind of went down that path and just kind of had to learn a bunch of things along yeah. the way, like building websites, marketing products, building products, that kind of thing. And, um, and from there, I just ended up with a, a toolkit of enough skills that I could actually do that for, for other people, for other businesses. And then, um, yeah, started that kind of as a, as a service. Turned out that I just absolutely love marketing. And um, 
yeah, I, I guess that was the mis the mistake part of it. Just I, I never would have predicted that, but it, it turned out that to be a real a real passion. Did you, so. did you start any of your own online businesses back back then as well? I did, I did. Um, I wrote a I wrote a book about tennis. Yeah. Um, I wrote a book about tennis. And I, wow. It was about uh, about Roger Federer and um, self like self published kind of ebook kind of thing and so I had to build a website I had to learn about Google Ads all this kind of stuff um, I made a couple of other products kind of similar um, yeah so that that's kind of that were, that were my first first forays into, how, into how the, trying to sell stuff on uh, I sold some copies nice. but i wouldn't have called it a commercial success <laughs> um but for so the time the time that i put into it but uh it was yeah it, it taught me it taught me so much and and I, I was able to make a lot of mistakes and and realize you know what what it actually takes to make to make a product successful and and that, that first attempt at it wasn't wasn't really it um but uh yeah it was nice it, it was nice you Making, I made made some sales and um, yeah, it was a good it was a good first first sort of project on the job learning almost for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Why tennis? <laughs> um, I play tennis. Uh, I played played a lot when I was a kid competitively. Um, I still play now. So it was it was a mix of two things. One was. One was obviously tennis, and it's something I knew about. But also, performance was something that I became yeah. really, uh, really obsessed with. I was just started. Re I was reading all kinds of books on on performance. What does it actually take? I was kind of obsessed by the idea of uh, people who achieve these great mm. things um, are seen to be these really um, special people like you know especially gifted yeah. or talented people but that behind the scenes there was actually something going on that that actually does explain those successes mm -hmm. so that's that success is explainable mm -hmm. and so that's what kind of the book was about it was it was about what what actually what path did he take and and why it was no coincidence that he ended up um, where he did mm -hmm. um, and so that performance aspect of it is something that's all, always run alongside um, you know, it's been a, a huge interest for me. Um, so alongside market, and so which is great today that I get to kind of merge all I was of that just in. About to into say, one like thing. now working with you know you're in that business space specifically working with you know the corporate execs and your business owners, mm. your CEOs. A lot of that performance base would come into play. Like, and you when you work with someone, is it a holistic approach of you're trying to look at them physically as a human being and then in the business space separately? Yeah, well, we it normally starts out that you know people come wanting help with the business and you know fix the business. So there and there is there's there's that business strategy side of it, business advisory. Um, but really, nothing really big can happen without having the, the there's really a person, the owner of the company, for example, who's responsible for executing all of this stuff within the business. And it's kind of so much of the time it's it's developing their capacity to to do those things um, that that really end up being the biggest focus of of the job. And it's it's not always what they come to us for, um, but it's it's what makes the biggest. And difference. what does that look like? So when you're talking about someone trying to increase their capacity to you know focus or whatever it is, what does that actually look like? Well, if you think of a typical business owner, they've got a lot of different roles within the business, mm. right? You know, they're probably often still delivering the service to clients, customers. They've got admin. They might do a bit of marketing. They do they do all these different things. Um, we all we get so many really talented people, so business owners as a group, like they're, they're intelligent people. You know, very very talented people. They've often built a business from scratch, like doing really good things. But in terms of their performance as the person who's going to grow this business to the next stage, they're often extremely restricted in, in what they can do. 
So, for example, just if we look at the amount of time that they're spending in that, in that, let's say the CEO role, or let's let's call it chief growth officer, you know, that person who's who's trying to figure out, right, how do we grow this business? Um, so often that time is, is actually a really, really small part of their week. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first ways that that we can really substantially increase someone's uh, someone's performance is to you know if, if you're if you're spending one hour per week in that role which is which is very typical you know because you've sort of so always so much other stuff to do and often it gets tacked on at the end if i've got time i'll spend a bit of time thinking about where the business is growing and where it's dark and so on um increasing that one hour to 10 hours it, it can be quite quite literally a um tenfold increase in in their performance because they're they're now putting 10 times the resources into that into that function and they're also when you spend one hour per week on something if you did you know powerlifting for one hour per week yeah you, you would kind of improve but when you spend 10 hours a week not only do you put more work in but you actually get better at it so a lot of the people that we work with ha haven't actually spend a whole lot of time in, in that critical role that makes the business grow. Is that a tough And so it, it, it's kind of a little very casual thing for them. So even just spending more time, they, all of a sudden they, they get really good at, you know, becoming a leader for that business. Is it a tough conversation to have with most business owners? As you said, like a lot of them have started from scratch. It's their baby. They, they want to, I think there's a lot of, um, uh, I guess, thoughts that they got to be in the business to grow the business mm. when no, we know that's not necessarily true. And I think I'm speaking from my own personal experience. Like it's a lot of letting go, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of attachment there. Um, and, and, you know, because it's, it's worked, it's worked for them. Yeah. So what, what works for what, that's what you early in the business. That's what, that's what makes you successful is it, it's, we get these people who, who have, have this amazing ability to perform eight different roles within the business, get all the work done, really, really make all of that happen. And that's, it, it's an amazing feat to, to grow a business and, and to have, to have the skill set to be able to do all those things. So it's really worked for them, but then there's a point where it stops working where they, they kind of become that bottleneck mm -hmm. for the business. And from there, there's, there's a, there's a shifting gears that that's needed. And yeah, that's, that can be very, challenging process yeah i can imagine for most yeah. business owners, like even myself just trying to yeah where do you find that 10 hours yeah like i'm sure you get asked with like if you asked a business owner actually that's a really good question what is your response to someone when they say to you Where's that 10 hours? where is that 10 hours yeah um well first of all usually they people don't know where their time is yeah, going that's a fucking great answer yeah that's true they just they just know they're busy then they're too busy and they've got no time mm -hmm. And so often it's just going back to that that first. All right, well, let's just make sure we can see. Let's just make sure, okay, we can see where your time's going, um, what your actual role looks mm -hmm. like, and then we can kind of figure out, you know, can something be delegated? Is it, it are all those roles as important as the role we're trying to yeah. build? Yeah, which can be worth a lot of money. So if you're looking, you've got looking to double the size of your business this year. Um, then that growth role is potentially worth, you know, you, you might be at 100,000 growing to 300,000 or half a million growing to 1 million. Like that, that growth role is actually worth a lot. Oh, no. mm. <clears throat> yeah. And so um, putting that alongside some of your other tasks that, that may not stack up yeah. as well. That's actually a really good point. And like, honestly, I feel like I'm asking questions that I want to know the answers. <laughs> <laughs> that, that kind of makes sense. You, you maybe take away. Hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, if <laughs> hypothetically, if I owned a business, I'm then how would you coach me? <laughs> yeah, but that, that makes sense. Like, say, if working two hours on something pays you X dollars, but you give up those two hours and say, right, that's my what you call it, CEO time instead. In the bigger picture of that year, that value will be added, right? Is that that's what you're kind of saying? Yeah, there's a cost. There's a cost to to not sitting in that CEO yeah. chair, um, and it and it might be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. per year. Um, so, 
once we start to build up that equation, then it, some of those other jobs that you felt like you couldn't let go before, they start to look a bit more expensive. They start to look, oh, maybe I don't have to do that. Um, maybe I don't have to be the person sending out all the invoices. Yeah, yeah you don't have to do that. that because because I can get someone to do that for 20 bucks an hour. <laughs> it's true. Um, so it because sometimes you just need that bigger reason, don't you? Like um, if you've got nothing better to do, you'll just keep doing the jobs that you're doing. But but so we kind of need to build that role alongside it, alongside your current week and so you can go oh okay that's a really important role that i'm not getting done and then that gives you a bigger reason to start start you know letting go as you say that's a tough one I mean, yeah I know, particularly how... if you're talking small business like the, their little baby they've started at ground up you mm. don't want to give away mate scrubbing the toilet invoices or anything it's all yours <laughs> you know it's your toilet oh. Only yeah, you can yeah. clean it exactly uh, the way it needs to be No one has the attention to detail that exactly. I do yeah. scrubbing toilets. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a fair one. But, uh, you know, I've, I still like to think I'd give that one away, but... <laughs> it's an analogy. I know it's an analogy, <laughs> but... It's like personal responsibility, I guess, that if I use that toilet, I should probably clean it. Yeah, I mean, and I clean a hell of a toilet. <laughs> when I'm cleaning the toilet at FB, I clean the, sh- I I clean think the shit like out of it. I remember reading, and... Um, I'm, well, kind of leads us to my next question for you, Dave, which is, you know, who do you look to? But like, I remember someone, one of the things I've read from a CEO that I really admire, um, and I'm not sure if you know him, but I think Johnny Wilk is obviously Tony Doherty. He cleans his toilets. He, yeah, like, I think he, people like to see themselves bigger than everyone else in a, in a business. And I feel like, you know, you shouldn't have a problem with cleaning a toilet. Yeah. You shouldn't have a problem with sweeping the floors every once in a while. Because you aren't, like, as a CEO, I believe, you know, part of leading by example is you should be able to do what you're asking of your staff. Yeah, I, and I personally, like, I feel that as, that way as well. It's like you're, you're above you're above everybody. Um, and, and just so on any particular occasion, um, I think you should have the ability, the leeway to, to jump in, roll your sleeves yeah. up, you know, um, and, and show people that, oh, hang on, oh, oh, I don't touch that. You know, that's that. Yeah. no one wants to be that, that person. Um, but when you do have to jump into the business, it's worth making a note of those things. Do you find... Because you don't want to be doing those on a... You don't want to become the cleaner yeah, regularly. 100%. And so often it's a, ga- it's a nice little... Um, it's a nice little bit of data that, oh, hang on, you know, a staff can, you know staff member couldn't come in and we didn't have anyone to replace them so i had to jump in it's a nice to keep a little ledger of that so you go oh okay here's a gap that needs filling and it shouldn't always it's okay for you to jump in but in future we want we don't want to have to jump in and fill that do you find though when you have that initial conversation like hey you're the ceo of this business you can't be doing all the little stuff and again it's a lot of this is contradictory but do you find they go completely left field and then stop doing all the little things completely and then it's another conversation to go, hey, no, no, we're not better than anyone. It's just that title. <laughs> uh, not, not generally. It's more, it's more that struggling to let go is usually the bigger issue. Um, I pref- Generally, it, it's, I kind of prefer them to go the other way and, and just dump, kind of drop everything because at least they're problems we can solve. We can go, okay, you know, it's like we're letting the business fail to, to a small degree is actually a really good thing to do. So for example, if, if someone did cancel cancel a, a job and then you you decided not to step in, you might have to cancel cancel your appointments for that day. And that now that's a that's a hit that you take, but it's also it's going to be really motivating for you to then solve that problem. Yeah, right. And go, oh okay, well we need someone on standby. Yeah. You know, something like that. It must be um pretty rewarding job bro like because like, you've been doing this for quite a while i imagine sitting down with x business and you know they're looking to grow it and etc and then you work with that client for multiple years and then all of a sudden it's like yeah we've doubled it or added another 50 or 20 percent or anything or found more time for the business owner for themselves that must be a pretty rewarding experience it's amazing it's amazing it's the best it's the best yeah. job I, I just i love it i've spent a, i spent a long time looking for like the perfect job like i'm really 
picky like you know it comes to work like I've always had that feeling that my work should align with who I am and my values and that that's that's hard because it means it means you're unsatisfied with it with a lot of different um, types mm. of work um, so it, it's nice to have found something that that does bring bring all those things together it's personally rewarding um, it's it's um, more than you might, even might think so you you you're there kind of to fix, you know, to help people grow the business, um, fix things that are wrong with the business. But because it's a very personal process, um, you're actually often helping people um, make some really important changes in their lives and, you know, it flows on to their relationships. They're just, just, just how happy they are um, on a day-to-day basis. Um, so it's really, you, you do really feels that's such a good feeling mm. that is awesome to see the mm. work that you are doing mm. and back to my sorry a little step back but who do you can I ask a question of you yeah of course <laughs> um what are people when people come to you so people come to you to get stronger people come to you maybe to compete um what else do they what are the what are kind of the surprising surprising benefits of powerlifting that people may not have kind of realized that they were going to get when they came for me, I think when they came into the sport. For me, I think, and I'm sure Johnny would uh, be the same in his community, but I think it's the, the friends they make along the way mm. is a big one. Like our communities are both very yeah. quite close. And, you know, we've spoken yeah. about on, on our potty before, like seeing the generate, like generation gaps between people and they're just the best of friends. Like that mm. is, is yeah, one unreal yeah. thing because then suddenly instead of you know if someone's got a problem they're not well nobody picks up a yellow pages anymore but nobody google searches um, <laughs> for a, a plumber or something they may just call one of the community members which is just a really cool yeah. feeling and then yeah you know as you said before that confidence of mm. achieving something or making changes and letting go of negative habits or whatever mm. it may be you know that flow on into their life their their personal relationship like that shit's rewarding and mm. You find people change as people. You see oh, them kind of growing in confidence. and Without yeah. a doubt, the confidence is a big thing. And I just think, you know, we've said it again on a potty before, but like the barbell doesn't lie. It keeps you honest. Mm. You know, it may be 200 kilos, 200 kilos. And if if someone's ego is bigger than that, it's, it's soon going to be brought back to earth. And I think I've seen people be humbled. And I've also seen people really rise to the challenge and gain that confidence. Mm. And, I think it's just an absolutely rewarding sport in itself because it's you know mm. it's, obje- it's objective. It's not subjective like other sports may be. Mm. There's a set of rules that you have to do, and if you can't do it, it, it does fall back on the person, and you got to own that. So, is it different to is, is is coaching different to what you thought it would be when you started out? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Fucking oath. <laughs> yeah. like, like, we're just making big people skinny and skinny people big and lift some weights and yeah, eat, some, eat some salad, you know? I've actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is okay. That is going on our, that is great line. You just said, um, no, I, yeah. What Johnny said, man, like you, and I think that's the thing, you know, you go through these certificate courses to become a coach or you go to uni and a lot of it's spent, which it should be, don't get me wrong, but a lot of time on the technical, technical stuff. Stuff, well, yeah, depending on which course you go through, but yeah, like a lot of it is spent yeah. on, your i guess your craft so to speak but you know you you walk out of that degree certification whatever and you suddenly have to run a business manage you know invoicing manage Mm. client relations and all this sort of shit and you're like what the fuck am i doing like (laughs) reading contracts that you don't know (laughs) shit in and no one told me this was part of the deal i think teach me that at pt school no they definitely (laughs) that's probably the biggest difference and i guess the other aspect is realizing like through the courses you get taught you know these your uh your glutes externally rotated the hip your shoulders protract retract whatever it is but you forget there's a human in in that in front of you Mm. and then sometimes you get like for me i know i've been especially caught out when they say something that's quite either profound or quite deep and i'm like oh yeah you're not just a bag of bones and muscles that i need to break down and have a look at you're also a human being with feelings and that was a quick lesson early on and uh, and if you're not if, if you don't take that into account that you're not going to get the best out of and i think that's the you know 
Johnny Johnny's got a phenomenal ability to connect with any human being, probably even animals. And um, so I think <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really nice. Um, and I think the conversation <laughs> skills that we've developed along the way is the gateway to really unlock human performance. Mm. Um, I'm a big believer in mm. you know elevating not just a person's physical performance. That's fucking easy. Like that for me, I think I lost the I lost the challenge of that a long time ago because if someone comes in like, oh, I can't squat, well, it's like, okay, we'll just fucking do this, this, and this. But if someone comes to me and be like, hey, I need to perform better, that straight away excites me because I'm like, okay, well, let's look at all these little things or let's delve deep. Let's mm-hmm. have a conversation. What's holding you back? Yeah, so they 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 come to and they tell you they're for they're for one reason. There's always something deeper, though. but through 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 conversation, you undercover you you uncover what their real barriers are. Yeah, or for me, it's like what they're really really seeking. You know, I've always kind of lived by like the purpose of a goal is not to get the goal; it's to become the person you are worthy of that goal. And the process of becoming that person to Say if someone comes in there, say you know their biggest deadlift is say 250, they want to pull 300. There's a lot of shit they need to let go of before they can step into that realm because that is a mm-hmm. you are pushing the top enchilada of one human performance, but also your body's performance. So what do you got to stop doing? And you know you get people. They, it may be as simple as stop drinking on the weekend, and mm-hmm. suddenly they're performing better in work. They're performing better in their relationship. They're having mm-hmm. more meaningful com- uh, conversations because they're just alert and clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so to achieve that level of performance, there's actually dozens of factors oh, so that, that come into that. And if and if you don't step away from just the physical, yeah. you can be very limited like a, in that performance of, because you're not you're not having everything pull in the same yeah, direction. A lot of what I look at is what we what I like to call the micro data. So I'll I'll track more so specifically than just the training, their sleep, their nutrition, their steps, their hydration, their stress, their heart rate. Um, resting heart rate, blood pressure, all those factors, if we can manage them better, the performance and the goals, the physical stuff take care of itself. Mm. I think it's pretty no accident, and Brando would see this, but the the guys and girls who have the really good years performance-wise typically have really good years with relationships, Mm. um, Mm. their workplace or whatever else they're working on themselves, whether it's towards a holiday or saving something or the career or something else they all end up getting better together mm. because, yeah, that mindset you need in a gym to achieve great things, it, that carries over to anything you do, I think. 100%. And I think mm. that, like, it's a pathway and, you know, the, our bodies don't recognise stress on any other level other than a chemical level. Like, it doesn't know if it's emotional stress, physical stress, training stress. So if we can manage that, we're going to get better performance. And as Johnny said, like, the community aspect and the mindset that comes into it, like, if... Mm. If Johnny's pulling fucking 300 kilos, well, if, actually, that's a really terrible example. If you lift anything, everyone gets hyped. So, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, your intro, I was on the, the intro to the yeah, podcast, yeah. those those videos, they're so good. Oh, oh, you, you guys have nailed those. <laughs> the music, you guys just about to run through walls. Oh, it's so to be good. Fair, we had nothing to do with that. Um, we are good at talking <laughs> shit and coaching. Uh, we actually shout out to our audio and video guys. They put all that together. And yeah, that's yeah. actually one of our... Uh, one it's of my beatbox. Form- the yeah. music is beatbox. Yeah, by one of my our, former our... clients is an Australian... Uh, oh, player, really? Australian uh, it, it really it's makes it, hey. It's just like boom, boom. You just start getting... Yeah. Fun, like You start like wanting to yeah. do something like straight yeah. away. Crushing kilos. 100%. So that... Yeah, 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 we definitely didn't nail that. I, thank you for the compliment, but it definitely mm. wasn't hard. <laughs> well, you, you played a starring role yeah, anyway. Yeah, we're the pretty faces. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I think, again, in any endeavor, whether it be in the gym, in business, if you're looking at the goal specifically, you've I believe you've lost the battle mm. because a lot of it comes mm. from like a, one thing I uh, implemented this year was getting my guys to write out their goals but then map it out across like a SWOT analysis because it really showed them where their strengths, I, I helped them identify, sorry, where their strengths and weaknesses are, but also what they really need to eliminate that could be possible threats, whether that be unhealthy relationships with people or alcohol or whatever, substance, whatever, mm. um, and then show them good opportunities to really leverage. Yeah. Think, and that there's more opportunities than just that, yeah. just that one muscle group. Yeah. That they that they think is holding them back. Well, that's it's one opportunity, yeah, but there's there's other 
there's a whole bunch of other things that go into that. I think that it's really uh, it's really cool tool to use, um, not just in training but across because it it one it helps bring awareness to the person that okay, well I don't just have one option here. I have multiple things. I can you know there's many ways up the mountain, and then two, it helps them. I forgot my second point. Um, big mountain, and it's so motivating, it isn't is. it? Like like to go oh, I, I just can't. I can't increase that lift yeah. or, you know, I can't grow that muscle or whatever. It's like, well, hang on. You've got other options That's here. That's the thing. Sorry. Yeah. It also helps identify that maybe it's not just a physical thing. Mm. Maybe that yeah. the biggest threat is that they don't actually believe they can achieve the goal. Mm. So straight away, there's a mindset thing that we need to work on. And it may be a simple conversation where I tell them to shut the fuck up and just go do it. Or, hey, here's <laughs> a number for a sports psychologist. Go book an appointment. How do you guys go with those, those kind of harder conversations where you, you you've kind of got to tell them to like um, get their act together or, or in whatever? The early days, you 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 don't have it, you yeah. avoid it, and you pretend yeah. it's not there and it's yep. not worth having. But mm-hmm. then you then come to the realization that you know you're being it's, paid for a service to coach them and help them get towards helping. X goal. And if that's truly X goal they want, you've got to be ready to have a hard conversation with your with yeah. your client. And if anything, you, you're the person who should do that because mm. you know their friends are their friends. Yeah. We're not paid to be a friend. We're paid to help them get to the yeah. thing they want to do. And if they're doing shit things on the weekend that's not getting them there, or they're doing things that's self-destructive towards it, you need to be ready to sit them down on the bench and say, "Hey, yeah, what are you doing?" <laughs> I think, um, and they yeah. appreciate it, hundred percent. And I agree with Johnny. Like at mm. the start, I'd very much avoid those types of conversations because they are difficult to have when you do genuinely care about someone, but. I think realizing that it does come from a place of love and care and I've been quoted as an empathetic asshole and I really love that just because, <laughs> of me because I, do, I will empathize with you I'll sympathize with you and I'll really feel what you feel but at the end of the day I don't give a fuck what I have to say to you to get the result and if you have a problem with that then we're not the right coach and client for me mm. and mm. that's okay like at the end of the day I can't coach everyone um, as much as I'd love to I can't uh, I'm not the I'm not the flavor for everyone, and I'm quite unique, and I yeah. know that. So, yeah. But I will call a spade a spade, and shit shit. Yeah, and you're right that it early on that's hard to mm. do, isn't it? You're like, oh, let's just keep this smooth, keep this relationship smooth. You know, like they're they're happy enough. Let's really? let's just keep you going. Um, you don't want to rock the boat. I, I think suppose. it also comes like for, I know for myself, especially came from a place of being um, scarce like you know you you have a new client come in you don't know when your next new client's coming you don't know if you're going to keep within so you absolutely like, need to hold on to this dollar so yeah i'm just going to baby him i'm not yeah. going to tell them what they really want to hear because i had a fear of losing it but when i felt more it feels like there's a risk yeah, to that 100%. it's like oh, yeah, you feel more yeah, secure, yeah you'll as i said mm. i'll say anything to anyone and then from a business perspective i think the, the client you didn't have that the hard chat with, you're probably going to lose them anyway because you didn't get them where they wanted to be. Yeah, 100%. So, so I think, and we also build Absolutely. Trust. Yeah. Telling someone that, you know, they're being shit, it's as tough as it is. Mm. They'll either go away and go, nah, fuck you, you're bullshit, whatever. Or nine times out of 10, they'll have that reaction and then come back and go, thank you. And mm. that is a really good yeah. feeling. Yeah, 100%. What's... um. And it's and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, bro. Obviously, you've worked with a lot of interesting businesses over the years. What's one of the the strangest and wackiest ones you've worked with? Um, we have a lot of just kind of standard type businesses. Um, got some interesting ones at the moment, but like, I don't want to say anything zany or wacky. Um, I've got like a I work with a costume costume shop, like you know, dress up. <laughs> um kind of stuff um um working with an interesting business at the moment who helps um, helps people who are transitioning genders to modify their voice um kind of update their voice through training to um more more fit to the to the gender that they wish to yeah like so um that's, that's a that's cool. yeah that's a different one I didn't know really that. really interesting Re- really like so valuable yeah, yeah. Fucking you know, for, for the people. Person they're working with um 
Yeah, um, and they get really good results too. Wow. Um, so, like, that's that's a business that I didn't know existed. Yep. That'd be the other one <laughs> um, until, until very you recently. See all of these businesses that you perhaps would never have known that was out there as well, right? Yeah, there's there's there is more businesses out there than than just the um you know just your accountants and your um <laughs> butchers and bakers. So it's um, well, that's such a uh, it's it, it's so interesting. You make a good point. Like I remember growing up thinking like you, if you weren't one of those things, if you didn't have a physical space or whatever, it was like mm. you didn't have a business. And now like you can fucking work from your kitchen bench and still have a very successful business. Like it's such a Oh, you can, you can do anything these days. Like, yeah, it felt like when I was at school, it felt like there was only certain careers and you kind of had to pick one. When you get out there, you realize there's, there's people are doing all sorts of things that you just never would have heard of. Um, but there's, there's kind of a job do, for everything. Do you see, I don't know if I'll use mistakes as the wrong, right word to describe it, but do you see common challenges across new people you work with when they start off with you? Like are the same people doing the same things and it's like, you know, stop doing this and this, like, you know, everyone kind of does that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely common threads. Um, most people have kind of reached a, a plateau. They've, they've been successful, had success, early success, and they've, they've reached that plateau. And, and like the most common one is, is they've gotten to the point where the owner is now the, the bottleneck and, and, and they're flat out. Um, sometimes they're profitable, but they, they want more. Sometimes they're not quite profitable. Um, and they're, they're looking to, to um, they're realizing that they, they can't keep going the way they're going and, and achieve um, all of the things they want. So, you know, people want more money, they want more freedom, um, you know, and, and yet to, to have them at the same time um, isn't, isn't really happening. Like more money means more work. More money, more problems. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. And then often that, more work means less money because when you're like so flat out, you know, you stop marketing, you stop following up sales opportunities and all of a sudden two months later, you've actually shrunk again because you, you, you were just so busy. So then that, that kind of bottleneck is, is really the, probably the most common mm. thread that, like, through, through all of our clients. Now, yeah. Before we, we delve into our, uh, I guess our better part of the show <laughs> that we do enjoy to freak our guests out. Um, if you were to give a, I guess, a common piece of advice or what is the most common piece of advice that you give to business and business owners? Stop right to me. No, I was literally about to <laughs> screen record this. And... <laughs> like if I ask you for your top three business advice. Um, we touched on it before on, on actually – sitting down and, and, and figuring out how much time that you're actually spending as the leader of the business. So as that, as that CEO, um, once you see how, how small that actually is, you have a sense of how much better you could be performing in that role and how much bigger impact you could be having on that, on that business. So if you hire a CEO and then they doing their, they're logging in, doing logging their time each week and, they're only clocking in for an hour a week. You'd be like, "What the fuck? Right? What's going? What's going on here? Like, let's, you know, we need we need you. We've got you, got you here to do a job, um, but we don't apply that same that same filter to ourselves. Um, so, um, yeah, that's kind of often a, a starting point for for assessing your performance as as a leader of the business. Um, Probably another one is I like there's a story that I heard that I, I like personally and, and it's that um, story of I can't remember who told the story, but they're at a conference and they there's those workshops, you know, conferences often have these workshops going along um, on side of them and he sees like the, one of the world's most prominent marketers there and he sees there's, there's two workshops. One's a you know, beginners got uh, basics of marketing and the other ones, you know, advanced marketing. And he sees the, the, this world famous marketer walking in the line for the, for the beginners course, mm -hmm. the basics course. And he says, he, he, I got, went over and asked him, he says, what, you know, you're, you know, uh, one of the world's best marketers. What, why, why are you in this line? You know, why are you going to the basics course? 
and he says, well, if I'm missing something in my business, I want to make sure it's not one of the big things. <laughs> That's a fucking good one. And, um, yeah, so, so some of those basic, like really basic things, like, for example, uh, people are often looking for some kind of marketing strategy or a campaign or like, oh, what do we say? Like something, it's quite complex. And because business owners are very intelligent, usually they're looking for these intelligent answers to things. And very often, like if you just peel it back and you say, well, how many people, how many new people heard from the business this week? Mm. And often the answer is zero. Like literally none. We didn't reach out to anybody. We didn't advertise. Like we literally, nobody heard about us this week. Mm. And when you're at that level, it's, it's, it's like, well, it's not about fancy campaign. Hey, let's just get in touch with some people. So who can we get in touch with? Maybe there's past customers. Maybe there's past leads that never bought from us. Mm. And maybe they're ready now. Uh, maybe there's current customers who, who could buy more from us, but, but aren't. You know, what kind of, comp who, who could we reach out to? Maybe we can just go and follow a bunch of people on, on social media and we'll, they'll get the little notification. Mm you know, such and such has followed you. Now you're on their radar. And if they're your target market, then that's 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 a lot better than um, a lot better than nothing. That's fucking really good one. So it's just those really um, kind of being a bit dumber, yeah. like not, not trying to be too, too smart and um, taking almost a caveman approach where like, well, sometimes, a ca you know, very smart people aren't, could be outdone by a caveman because... Um, they would just be knocking on doors and dropping their dropping their business card, but more people would be hearing from them than they would from you. You don't see many people do that anymore. <laughs> Fuck no. No, I think everyone everyone's looking for something smarter because yeah. because we we've, we've been drilled into this thing: work smarter, not harder. Work smarter, not harder. So yeah. I know. And so, ah, like, oh, no, not that. I won't do that. And and, and people say, oh, letterbox letterbox drops are done. You know, oh, that's so old school. I had a client. This week, he's just getting super response from letterbox drops. He's an electrician and it just, people are hearing from them, they need someone, the, the phone's ringing. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's just really simple Well, I think stuff. the simple stuff's good because like you said, people are trying to be complicated. So everyone's busy being complicated when mm. one, two or people be simple shit, like put something in a letterbox. There's no competition in that letterbox. <laughs> But if you're trying yep. to advertise on social media or get the fanciest website or keyword search, everyone is fucking doing that. And you're up against everyone. Mm. You got to do yeah. it really well then to, to, to get well, ahead I know, of the crowd. At our gym, one of the simplest things we did when we first started there, we don't, you know, we don't do it as, as anymore because giving away plastic water bottles is a bit bad. But we just sat out the front of the gym um, with nothing but a bucket of iced water in the middle of summer. And when everyone walked down the hill of Montpellier street, we gave everyone one Ugh. and then attached to it was, a, was a come try the gym for a week. And that was it. Uh, stop it. Stop. This, this is, ah, oh, I love that. I, I, just, I love that. Every stuff. one of our coaches love has it. done that, picked up clients, the gym got members and they didn't have to fucking do anything. It was easy. <laughs> and it cost them $20 mm. in water. Well, actually, it cost them nothing because the gym paid yep. for the water for them. Or we, I paid for it. We paid for yeah. it. Yeah. It was, it was brilliant. And then the other one, <laughs> on Friday afternoon, we'd have a barbecue for our members. So we we're, you know, I guess, rewarding and looking after those that already give us money, giving them food and growing the community. But then anyone who walked up the hill to go home on a Friday afternoon would give them a sausage if they wanted it. And right next to that was mm. a drop box where you can put your name if you are interested in what's happening inside here. And same deal. Mm. Picked up clients. And we didn't have to do anything. It cost us some sausages, and that's it. It was simple and easy. How good are sausages? Um, but like, here's well, that reminds me. Here, here, here's here's one. Here's something that I one of the pieces of advice that applies to any kind of brick and mortar business. Put up something massive outside the building. You know, like a whether it's a hot air, but you know, like it's a big, um, big shoe yeah. or a big car or a big hot air balloon. Like people are driving down your street right now that drive past every day of the week. This is most businesses and wouldn't still wouldn't know you there. So if people 
driving down your street every day of the week don't know that you're there like you you've missed the trick mm-hmm. like that's a, it's it's just kind of this a bit un, a bit unforgivable that like and then you're like oh what do we what should we do to get client put a big bloody sign out the front like you, when you've got one of those big things you become the landmark of the suburb yeah. So you know how like when you're directing someone in your house, you're like, oh, you go past the big gorilla and then you turn left and, you know, you, you become this landmark that everybody refers to. And I still remember some from my childhood. There was a hardware store with this big giant on the roof and that would be the landmark. Oh, you go past the giant and then um, – and so you, you you become known to everybody in the suburb, everyone in the street. And that's just a huge leg up. It doesn't necessarily mean everyone runs in. But it means you're on the list every time. You're on the list of consideration. Yeah, that's the thing. You need to be in on the list and in consideration. So when all of a sudden they want X you're business, the they're like, oh, fuck, yeah. giant place. They do what that yeah. thing is. Why don't we go there? Yeah. Oh, where can I get where can I get a new chainsaw around here? You can go, oh, well, you know the big giant you passed on the way in? Yeah, that's a hardware store. 100%. Like, 100%. yeah. Just got to do the simple shit. But really, really basic, uh, kind of old school, um, and maybe not that, seemingly not that intelligent, but uh, just, yeah, those I've got matter. one for you. You'll love this. I used to um, have a few coaches, quite a few coaches used to work under us at, a, at another gym. Um, and one day we're just sitting down and just shoot the shit on what to do. I was like, boys, just go and door knock some people. And like they wanted a great corporate group. I was like, just go door knock some fucking businesses. So that, these boys were savages though. So they would go down the city go find the big building, let's say 20 level, they'd hop on level 20 and then they'd go down every fucking level and just try and beat their way through a receptionist to get to the next person to find out how to get <laughs> to get their name on their yep. list. Within about eight weeks, they had eight corporate groups. Mm. And it was just by being savages and being yep. in front of people. Yeah. How good is that? That's so baller. Yep. Yeah, I loved it. They were fucking weapons. <laughs> and you could spend, you know, and, and you literally do have, people you know spending months and 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 sometimes years putting together a website and you know oh I'm, i won't launch the website yet because i've got a few more tweaks to make and, and and it's this this very long drawn out process that building something that may not even result in business um, yeah you so you've got these yeah, that the complete opposite approach, and, and they're, they're actually not getting. They've got a website, or they're building. Spent six months building a website. How many, how many doors could you knock on in six months? Yeah, exactly right. Like stack. Like you could have an absolutely pumping business. Six months of knocking on doors, and you'd learn so much more about what customers want because you're having these conversations with 100%. people. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, we used, I used to do that with another lad. We used to have so much fun. We would our goal was we would either get clients or have a good story at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. And more often than not, we just had good stories and no clients, but at the very least the stories were good, like maybe rocking up at some strip clubs for lunch because we worked out that strippers were available during the day because they worked at night and we had no daytime clients, our night times were full. So we're like, Yeah, strippers. Because they work at night, they're available <laughs> during the day. And then you go to the strip club and you work out, oh, we've got to go in for lunch, so we better have lunch there so we can network with them. And, and yeah, yeah, networking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mate, yeah. Had to yeah network. I see we what you're saying, trip networking. With this, not too long after that. <laughs> we cannot argue. Great client. Great client yeah. place. Exactly, mate. Yeah, they're yeah. They're full of cash. They, they're, they're body conscious. They're, their image is everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it mate, it was genius, and and it absolutely worked. No, oh, look, no, it, it makes all the sense in the world. Not... Having fucking lunches at strip clubs to go and buy that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's tax deductible entry fee and lunch. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I was literally thinking, where lunch keep all your receipts. Yeah. yeah, we kept our receipts. <laughs> mate, I love that. Look, before we finish up, we have ten of the most random questions you'll ever hear in your life. Uh, this is designed to get more of an insight for of the man behind uh, the face that is Dave. Mm-hmm. And again, I like to just say that I didn't come up with these questions. So if they are weird, it's all gone. <laughs> um, <laughs> rapid fire. First thing that comes to your mind and go. Dave, what challenges you? What challenges me? Um, every day. Every, every day is a, is a challenge. Um, how, how to live. How to live is, is a constant um 
Yeah, constant like challenge. It. Never haven't figured it out yet, and still, uh, still like figuring it out. What dream animal would you like to own? Dream animal. Uh, I always wanted a ferret. That'd be fun. Uh, what makes you grumpy? Um, bad drivers. I agree with that. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. it it's, it's a good testing ground. <laughs> What's your favorite household cleaning task? Household cleaning task. Um, I like cleaning the kitchen because um, it just... It makes the whole place feel feel clean. Agreed. If that's in Agreed. order, Agreed. if that's good, and you know that bench top, you get that oh, bench man. top just absolutely cleared, not one thing on it, and and you feel like you're in, you're in a good place. place. Like life's life's good. <laughs> How many pairs of shoes do you own? Um, I have trouble throwing out shoes, okay. so I tend I tend you to hold I tend to hold on to it. Going on here? So I've got a fair few. Um, and so, yeah, I've got probably my last three pairs of joggers that are, <laughs> and I make the case that, oh, I'll mow the lawn in those ones. Um, you know, so I always feel like there's there's going to be some kind of use to it. Um, so I've probably got like a, a this dozen might pairs lead of shoes. into the next question quite, quite well. Do you collect anything? Old shoe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not a huge collector of things um it's something i always always like like the idea of it oh, oh that's so cool these people got these yep. collections of things so i always think oh what could i collect what could but i've never um i do collect i've always collected rocks that's probably partly why i got that's into cool. geology um as a kid i always yeah had collected yeah crystals yeah, yeah. And, and rocks that i found so i've still got a pretty decent uh pretty decent rock that's collection cool. uh what would your warning label say <laughs> oh gosh um um i think it i think i'm hard to get to know like quickly so there be maybe some some something warning about that <laughs> like this may take a what <laughs> be, becoming friends um, with Dave, mate, may take a while. Um, <laughs> what, what, what's one... You're gonna have to hang around for a while. <laughs> what's one thing you'll never do again? Uh, geology. <laughs> um, <laughs> How would you explain um, your job to a five-year-old? Um, I've got two six-year-olds. Well, that works. Um, so I. I have occasionally had to do this. Um, usually, I tell them I, I help people with their with their work. Nice. Yeah, it's actually pretty. Yeah. Have you? Because because I, I don't not sure they have a, con, a concept of what a yeah, business yeah, yeah. what businesses are as such. Have you ever re-gifted a gift? Re-gifted. See if it comes out. I don't think so. I, 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 that's a hard. That's hard for me to do. Like, I can't in good faith really mm. do it. Like, it would be. I'd feel not not <laughs> great. But it's possible, possibly like a bottle of like, yeah, wine classic, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's, classic. It, that's possibly. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I would have done that at, at some point. Mate, that's ten of the best. That's ten of the best questions and most random ones you'll ever hear in your life. Um, Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and we do appreciate all the advice you have given um, for free as well what uh where can people find you give yourself a shout out uh yeah look us up at keystoneexecutivecoaching.com um you can find out about uh what we do there um it's pretty unique kind of what we do it's it's a the pay and results side of what we do is it's something that uh, no one else really does. Um, yeah, get in touch through there. You can ask for Dave if you want to speak to me. Um, we've got three three of us there, three consultants. And um, yeah. Awesome. Mate, Sick. we'll pop it all in the show notes. Again, thank you so much for giving up an hour of your time today. It's been exceptional. It has been absolutely Thank you, guys. And, um, we can't wait to 
to hear more about your adventures. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, it's been great. Um, hopefully we can catch yeah, up again and um, yeah, keep up keep up the good work Thanks, you're man. doing. Appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you, brother. Keep up good, great, great podcast too. You've, you've had some really good guests. We try. What can we say? <laughs> yeah. Legend, brother. Thanks very much, man.